Okay, so at the end of the last video, I was editing these overlay layers just so that they're, they're really clear elements, just like my texture is. And it could be, so the reason this is our final compositing project is it really is animation in the digital realm really is just about organizing layers, knowing how to create them, knowing how to edit them, and titling them can really help with the organization. So I have these, these overlay layers that are both, um, I'm going to color them both red. And they're sitting on top, one is sitting on top of my character here. And what I did is I erased all the extraneous middle gray. And then another is behind my creature, but affecting the landscape underneath. And I'm going to delete all of the extraneous gray from that as well, just by using my magic wand with a high feather, contiguous, and deleting. So that I can kind of see in the layer preview that they are shadow cutouts. And I can decide how useful they actually are. Now to simplify things greatly, come on, turn on. For my animation, I might just integrate this overlay layer onto my character. So I don't have to have two layers turned on just to have the right shading on my character. So how do I do that? I wouldn't do this for assignment three, but because I'm going to animate, I want to simplify my components. I select them both, and then I go to Layer, Merge Layers. And now those are both in the same layer, right? And if there's anything kind of weird, like there's a little haze on the bottom that comes from the overlay layer, I can just delete that out. And now this isn't on overlay mode anymore. It's just on normal mode at 100%. I think because of the feather, it gave a little haze around the edges. So I'm just going to delete all of that. All right. Or do I like it? Hmm. Now I'll delete. Okay. So now, what do I have? I have a creature. I have my original creature coloring. Now I can just delete that because I know that this is the coloring I want to start with for my first keyframe. So I'm just trying to build the assets for my first keyframe of my sketch. Underneath that, I have two layers underneath my character. I have an overlay layer, which is a shadow set on overlay mode at 62% opacity, which casts a shadow on the background. I do want to keep that as a separate asset because as my character moves, this overlay layer would move. And I don't want to merge it with my character layer because I need it. I need the shadow to be set on overlay and my creature to be set on normal. So the problem with merging layers is when you do it, it can only have one layer style. So if I merge them, it just turns it into a gray blob. So that shadow is going to be separate from my creature. My creature is orange. My overlay shadow is going to be red. Ah, come on. Lots of clicking. And I probably want to label them, right? My primary character is this layer. My overlay is actually my character shadow. So, and then I have my background. So I've got all these elements. I'm going to color code each one. I'm going to make my background green, and I'm going to make my atmosphere that's sitting on top. That's like the mist. I'm going to make that blue. All of these are going to change in my animation as I transform my creature into a block of ice and as I transform the environment into a, a winter's day. 
or to a icy landscape. Okay, so these are the four components I'm going to be animating and working with. So this is a good time to save it to make sure you're cropped down. And before that, I want to make sure that the whole image size is what I want. So I'm going to go to, to image, image size. I'm going to change the inches to 8 by 8 inches. And I'm going to change the pixels per inch to no more than 150. All right. I could do 72. I'm tempted to do 72. But I'll do that if I need to, if it starts to run a little slower. But I definitely have enough pixels to keep it at 150. All right. Now you can see that that shrunk it a little bit from my guides. So let me move my guides back. But this is 150 is, is a good screen resolution for high def screens. 72 is standard screen resolution. OK, so now I'm going to save. And I have it in my assignment 5 folder as my Carl assignment 5 setting PSD. OK, now I have my first keyframe. It's the first thing on my sketch. Where did my sketch go? There it is. It introduces the character. It establishes the setting. Everything works. Maybe I'll simplify the atmosphere a little bit by taking out that little solar flare. So I'm just going to stretch it out. There we go. Nice and blank. And then so that I'm not saving any memory I don't need. Well, actually, no, I'll leave that. So that if any time, I know I can always just move that atmosphere down. And I can get some shifts in how it looks. In fact, to make that even easier, I might widen it a little bit too. That's what's great about texture fills and atmosphere. So you can really stretch them. So that can be a little bit of an animated component. OK. Now, how do I save my first keyframe? I've already saved it as a PSD file. Right there. Now I want to save it as a JPEG. So file export as a JPEG. I'm going to keep the quality always at its defaults. So it's 1200 by 1200 pixels because it's 8 inches by 8 inches by 150 pixels per inch. And then it's going to go right into downloads. And I'm going to leave it in downloads out of uh, photo P. But I'm going to relabel it right away. One. So that's my first keyframe. And I can leave it in downloads. And now I want to set up for my next keyframe without destroying any of this. So this is my trick for that. For each of these, I'm going to create a folder. Folders are really important in organizing. And for each folder, I'm going to... Ah, put the asset into it. So I have a folder for the background. Come on. I'll have a folder for the atmosphere. And I'll have a folder for the character. Now the character and its shadow I can put in the same folder. Not a new layer, a new folder. And then you need to select the layers. And then this is a little tricky for me with my trackpad, but drop them into the layer. OK. So now all these things are in the folder. The atmosphere, the character, so on. 
Now what do I want to do? I want to duplicate. First, I'm going to go to the background and to the layer in the background. And I'm going to hit Command J or Action Key J and duplicate it. And I need my background to start transforming according to my sketch. I need clouds to start to appear. Right. But as clouds appear, I also might want to shift the color a little bit. So I'm just going to keep it pretty simple. Do the color balance and start adding some blue into the midtones. So it seems subtle, but it goes from this to this in just the first frame. From, to the, from the first frame to the second frame. I also want to add some clouds. So how can I do that? Well, I'm going to do just a little bit of internal compositing just to keep it fast instead of bringing in new elements. I'm just going to grab a lot of this, a, a wad of this sky, Command J it. Oh, you know what? I'm going to do exactly what we missed in assignment four, the cloud creature assignment. And I'm just going to go to Google Images So if I was doing the, the cloud creature assignment and replacing my creature with cloud shapes, I would find clouds from, from different image sources and then kind of cut out and composite with them like I'm painting with cotton, cotton balls. But here I have my frozen wasteland reference and some of it comes with clouds. So I can put that into my background folder this is for the background not for the atmosphere and then i can start rasterizing them erasing away at 100 percent opacity with a large soft eraser and to start to know how um, the end of my clouds are going to look, you know, when it is really stormy. And so as clouds start to gather, I'm just going to start their opacity very low. At maybe 10%, right? This is just for my second keyframe. So just like that. Now, according to my sketch, nope. <laughs> What's next? My creature has to move a little bit. So I've got the clouds introduced, but now my creature, I'm going to duplicate the creature and the shadow. So I'm gonna hold down Shift, select both of them, and then do Action Key J, Command J. And you see how it will duplicate each? And I'm gonna turn off the ones below. And then for these, I'm going to start with the character layer and I'm going to move it a little bit using something called Puppet Warp, which is just like a free transform and warp, except that it gives me kind of a, a chicken wire cage around my character. And I'm going to pin each of my toes and you click on the wireframe where you want to have pivots and anchors. All right, so now I've pinned the toes, I've pinned the tail, I've pinned the tip of this fin, and I've pinned the beak, which allows me to kind of pivot the beak up. But you see, if I do that, the other pins stay put. So I don't want to move it too much, but just a little bit. And remember, this is a copy, so I'm going to move my fin a little bit, I'm going to move my tail a little bit, and I'm just going to move my toes a tiny bit. And don't be too perfectionist about this. You just want a little bit of movement. Then hit return. So what did I have before? I had this. Come on. And now I have this.